for me. What is done for me? 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 Jesus, can't nobody do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Pick me up, turn me around, pick me up, turn me around, pick me up. Jesus, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody, nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. 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 Nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody.
from the 125th Numbers of Psalms, verses 1 through 5. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people, from his forth even forever. For the rod of the, for the, rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their heart. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the, wicked, with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. May we bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we come this evening in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we come with bowed heads and humble hearts to say thank you, Father. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your compassion. Father, we thank you for your darling Son, Jesus Christ, who stood in our place, took our sins upon himself. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son. Father, we come this evening just to say thank you for, your, for all that you've done for us. We can't offer up enough words that, are even come, that would even come close, but we just humbly say thank you for being a, an awesome God, a merciful God, a caring God. Father God, we come this evening asking if you will forgive us of sin that we may have committed along the way asking if you will forgive us and cleanse our hearts right now, that our, that our devotion with you this evening, our worship with you this evening, be not hindered because of sin. So Father, we come asking if you bring in our wandering minds and our scattered thoughts. Help us to focus in on nothing and no one else but just you. Father, we ask that you would touch the one that would bring your word tonight. But we need a refreshing, Father. We need a lifting. We ask him, Father, that you would speak through him, that he may lift up our spirits within us, that we may give you the praise and give you the glory. We ask, Father, that you be with us all tonight, and we ask it all in the name of our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you clap your hands and give God praise all over the sanctuary as you stand? Hallelujah. How many believe that the Lord is worthy to be praised tonight? On a Tuesday night, he's still returns to the Lord. Hallelujah. On a Tuesday night, he still deserves the praise. One more time, everybody, put your hands together as we worship the King of Kings tonight. Come on, let's do it together. Come on, worship us. praise him. to be 
praise. Come on, one more time. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. Worship him one more time. Say, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And I bow my head. I bow my head. Come on, we honor you, Lord. I honor you, Lord. Oh, I lift. I lift my head. I praise you, Lord. And we lift your name. Come on, everybody, help me sing it right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray. Won't you just heard the glory? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we lift. We lift Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We came to give you glory. We, pray we came to praise your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we live one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you glory. Hallelujah. We, pray your we honor your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift Lord, right there. So, Lord, we lift you up. Come on. Lord, we lift you up. On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday night, we do. Cause you've been so good, Jesus. Lord, we lift you up. You're a faithful, faithful God. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, if you believe the Lord deserves it on a Tuesday night. I need you one more time. Come on, from your belly. Somebody tell them, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift right there. Lord, we lift you up. Elohim, we lift you. El Shaddai, we lift you. Elohim, we lift you. Jehovah Rapha, we lift you. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Lord, we lift you up. Lord, we lift you up. I don't know what you need, but the Bible says if I be lifted up from the earth, he will draw you out from where you were. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, my son. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift. Somebody give him glory in the place. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, somebody clap your hands if you know he's mighty. If you know he deserves the glory. There is nobody greater than him, and we honor him for his greatness. We honor him for his power. Lord, you deserve the worship and the honor tonight. Father, we lift our hands to you. Because you deserve the worship on a Tuesday. You've kept our minds. You continue to wake us up and give us the activities of our limbs. God, we honor you for peace. That surpasses all understanding. You're our Father. And we love you. Worshippers, can you say something to your Father tonight? Come on. Hallelujah. Because my hallelujah belongs to you 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 
you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. it. Come on, say my hallelujah. Somebody tell them. My hallelujah belongs. Belongs to you. Father, we honor you. Come on, say my hallelujah belongs to my you. Hallelujah. You got it. That's good. Someone lift your voice and tell them, my hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah belongs yes, Lord. to you. Belongs to you, oh God. Oh. My hallelujah belongs. My hallelujah to belongs to you. Come on, somebody lift your voice. Tell them, you deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, Lord. Come on. You deserve it. You deserve it. If you know the glory belongs to him, somebody tell him all the glory, all of the glory belongs, belongs to, to you. Oh, 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 all the glory, all of the glory belongs, belongs, to, oh, oh, to, belongs to you. Say all of the glory belongs, all of the glory, yes, Lord, belongs, belongs to, to you. Come on, somebody tell him huh? you. You deserve it. Lord, we worship you because you deserve it. So faithful, you deserve it. You deserve it. There is nobody greater. You deserve it. You deserve it. Tell them you deserve it. All the honor, all the honor, and all the praise. All the praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. Come on, let him hear you. You deserve it, you Jesus. Deserve it. Oh, 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 you deserve it. You deserve it. Lord, you deserve it tonight. You deserve it. Come on, one more time, and I promise we're moving. We say hallelujah. 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 Nobody like you. Nobody like you. You're calling on by yourself. Nobody like you. Need nobody's help. Nobody like you. You're a healer. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. You're an El Shaddai. Nobody like you. You're an El Shaddai. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. Nobody like you. You're Jesus. Nobody like And there's nobody like you. Somebody just take a moment and worship the king right here. God, we honor you on a Tuesday night. God, you deserve the worship. You deserve the praise. You're a keeper. You're our sustainer. And we lift our voices to you. And we tell you we love you. We tell you we honor you. Somebody help me do it. Come on, don't let me do it by myself. But somebody, you tell them, we say hallelujah. hallelujah. You lift your voice and tell them, hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah. 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 
Everybody tell them you deserve it. Now come on, if you know the Lord deserves it, I dare you to take about 30 seconds and really give him what he deserves tonight. Come on, the Bible says let everything that had breath. Come on, you ought to be grateful tonight that you have the very activities of your limbs. Somebody woke up and didn't have breath today. But Father, we thank you, Lord, for the activities of our limbs. We tell you thank you for life on a Tuesday. Anybody came to praise him tonight on a Tuesday? He's still worthy of the glory. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I need you to just look at somebody real quick close so you can say, neighbor, he's still mighty. In spite of what you're going through, he's still mighty. Come on, I need somebody to clap your hands like you know he's mighty tonight. We're moving in just a second, but somebody put your hand together and let them know he's still a mighty God. He's still a healer. He's still a provider. Come on, I need you. If you know he deserves it for the next 10 seconds, clap like you know he deserves it. Clap like you know he deserves it. He's your keeper. Come on. Somebody put your hands on it and open up your mouth and praise him like he's your father. Praise him like he's your... Let everything that had breath praise you, the Lord. Amen, amen. Come on, let's put the hands together. For the Lord is worth it. He deserves it, y'all. Amen. The Bible says, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. I'm here to do the welcome. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to be real short because Christ died on the cross. He held his arm and opened wide. And when he did, he welcomed us all in. Amen. Amen. So with that, if anybody want to sing, anybody pray, then hope that someone be reached tonight. And ones that may not even know the Lord, that they would come and be saved. Y'all are sure welcome, welcome, welcome. Love lifted me Oh, love lifted me When nothing else could hate it was your love that lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. Oh. It was your love that lifted me when nothing else could have. Lord, I thank you for your love that lifted me. 
My humble, my humble, my humble cry. Oh, 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 Everybody got a yes in your spirit. Amen. Would you do me a favor? Would you stand with me tonight? 
Uh, tonight, I am excited and delighted to present to some and introduce to others the proud pastor of the Freedom Worship Assembly, none other than Dr. Joshua Daniels. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, what a mighty God we serve. The angels still bound before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. If you're excited about God and what he's done for you on this day, why don't you take your left hand and your right hand and put them together and give God a hand clap of praise and glory. Come on, you can do better than that. Our God is great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Our God is worthy of all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Well, I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the Crossing Community Church in partnership with the Gracious Hope Baptist Church on this Tuesday night. Will you help me to celebrate God? I call him the Pope. Will you help me to celebrate God for the pastor of this church, Pastor Harvey M. Walker? Come on, let's celebrate God for him. Come on, you can do better than that. Pastor Walker is an amazing man of God. And I don't use that term man of God lightly. Uh, I know a lot of preachers, but I don't know a lot of men of God. Amen. Uh, but Pastor Harvey Walker is a man of God, and I honor him, I respect him, I love him, and I thank him for the opportunity to share tonight. And then to Bishop Roderick Johnson, my friend and my brother. Come on, let's thank God for Bishop Johnson tonight. And uh, not just Bishop Johnson, good to see Pastor Courtney Greer tonight. Come on, let's thank God for him. And, I'm grateful to God. Our youth pastor is here. Reverend DeMontre Palmer is here. Come on, let's thank God for him. And I see one of my members, Aaron Steamer, done snuck in on me. And to all of you, the lot of God and everybody, it's good to be here tonight. There's a word from the Lord I want to share with you. Found in the collection of scriptures that is called the Old Testament. I want to focus your attention tonight in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18 tonight. Jeremiah, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life, words on the wings of the morning, the dark clouds will fade away, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak to my heart. Can you lift your hands and say that one time? Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit, give me the words. Give me the words. Oh, no, 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 no. That will bring the light. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark. Clowns will faint away, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak to my heart. Here's what we need him to do tonight. Speak to my heart, Lord. No, 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 no. Give me your holy words. If I can hear from you, no. I don't know what to do. I won't go alone. No, 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 no. Never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide me. And let your everybody say, speak to my Give me your holy word If I can't hear from you I don't, I don't know I won't go alone Say I never go on my own No, no Just let your spirit guide Yeah And let your word abide Come on everybody say Speak to my heart Give me your holy word Lord if I can't hear from you, I don't know what to do. I won't go alone. Say I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let you run in battle, Lord. Speak to my, speak to my heart, oh Lord. Speak to my heart. And so, Lord, it's preaching time again, and I'm in dire need of you. You know the frailties of my flesh, and so I ask that you stand in my body, think with my mind, speak with my tongue. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me tonight. Anoint me afresh and anew for the assignment at hand. Give your people listening ears and receptive hearts, but ultimately, responsive lives. 
And Father, if any good things should happen tonight, let no flesh be glorified and no humanity celebrated, but you take all of the glory. Just give us your divine blessings. So in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and ask it all. If you love the Lord, you ought to say amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 18, commencing at verse 1, concluding in climax at verse 6. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the Word of God. It may read slightly different from yours, but if your book says Bible, you're in good company. This is how my Bible reads. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Come, go down to the potter's house. There I'll let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his will. And the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel that seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Cannot I do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord. Just like the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. If you don't mind, for the time that is our show together tonight, I want to tag this text with this thought in our minds. God is making something out of me. I know you can't touch your neighbor, but can you just look at somebody to the left, to the right of you, talk through your mask and tell them God is making something out of me. Lift those hands towards heaven and say, Lord, speak. We need to hear. You may be seated in the presence of our good and gracious God. God is making something out of me. Pastor Walker, allow me to start off tonight by saying that there are an array of adjectives that theologians use to describe the greatness and the grandeur of our God. The truth of the matter is our God is unlike any of us. And so the truth is we really cannot explain him. We really cannot figure him out. However, theologians have found an array of adjectives to use to help us to try to do just that. One of them is the term immutable. Let the church shout immutable. What the immutable means is that God is unchanging, that God does not change. And no matter how you speak of God, he's always going to be the same. And so because God is immutable, I can say God was a healer. God is a healer and God will be a healer. God was a way maker. God is a way maker. God will be a way maker. God was a door opener. God is a door opener. God will always be a door opener. Okay, I see some of my grandmother's friends here, so let me use one of her terms. God was a mind regulator. God is a mind regulator, and God will be a mind. God was good God is good and God always will be good and I don't need all of you tonight if I can just get about nine of you I'll make ten who can testify one of the reasons I'm giving God praise tonight is because in the midst of a pandemic God is still the same God that everything God had been to me before coronavirus God still is to me right now and the only reason you're still in your right mind up in here up in here is because even though people People started acting brand new. God has been the same God. He's kept on healing. He's kept on providing. He's kept on sustaining. And your testimony tonight is you can't make me doubt him because I, I know too much about him. He's, he's immutable. There's another term that theologians use. They say God is sovereign. Everybody shout sovereign. And all that word sovereign means is that God is completely in control. And I think that's one that ought to make us shout tonight because the truth of the matter is the more we look at the world around us, everything appears to be out of control. But can I tell you the good news tonight? My hope tonight is not in the person in the White House. My hope tonight is not in the governor in the governor's mansion. My hope tonight is not in Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson. My hope tonight is that God is still in control. He's in control of my money. He's in control of my family. He's in control of my destiny. He's in control of my future. He's in control of everything that's going on around me. And is there anybody other than me that can testify? That's why I still got a smile on my face because I know who's in control. That's why I can still go to sleep at night because I know who's really in control. He's immutable. He's sovereign. There's another one. He is uh, omnipotent. <laughs> and that term omnipotent literally just means that God has all power. 
And you know, when I was growing up in church, that would be suffice to say God has all power. But Lorenzo, we're living in a day where there are so many competing powers and influences. You know, you got Christians that believe in scripture and sage. You know, we're living in a day and time where you got believers who believe in the anointing and praying to the ancestors. And so we're living in a day and a time where people think there's all kind of power. But the good news tonight is that God doesn't just have some kind of power. No, he is the the ultimate power which means what pastor walker there are other powers that exist but my shout tonight bishop johnson is that it doesn't matter what other power exists i know the power that exceeds god is the ultimate power why he don't have black power he don't have white power he don't have solar power he don't have nuclear power he don't have political power he doesn't have social power he doesn't have religious power he don't even have a little church power he got all is that in Anybody other than me? I'm trying to figure out why you ain't turned over that green chair you sit in yet. Is there anybody other than me tonight who can give God glory in this place and say I'll give him a crazy praise because I know who's got all power. I know who's the ultimate power. My boss got some power, but I know who's the ultimate power. Things around me got some power, but I thank him he's got the ultimate power. There's one more term I want to try to hang my hat on tonight for a few minutes. God is immutable. God is sovereign. God is omnipotent. There's one I want to hang my head on tonight, Palmer, and it's that God is intentional. Can the church shout intentional? Yeah. What do they mean, pastor, he's intentional? I mean, whatever God is doing, he's always doing it intentionally. That when God is doing something, he's doing it intentionally and when God seems like he's not doing anything he's doing it intentionally and that's why we've got to get back to a place where we start reading the Bible for real because I've come to discover pastor that a lot of our theology comes from these songs and not the scripture and so you've allowed a lot of gospel music to teach you the Bible and it taught you the Bible the wrong way and here's the problem whenever there is a misquotation there will always be a misinterpretation which leads to a misapplication preach Josh Daniels uh, which means if you read it wrong you'll interpret it wrong and ultimately you'll misapply it okay you don't like that let's try it this way you know that scripture y'all always like to talk about uh, that what the devil meant for evil God turned it for my good and so you even sing songs about it he turned it and God turned it around but here's the problem with that pastor Walker that's not what Genesis 50 and 20 says no no it doesn't say that what the enemy meant for evil God turned it for my good what that scripture says is that what the enemy meant for evil God meant for my good what's the difference see the problem is if I say God turned it for my good what I'm saying is that God had to play the defense and that God had to wait to see what the devil was going to do and then he got to decide what he was going to do but I don't know about you but I don't want no defensive God no God ain't never on the defense he's always on the offense which means that before the devil had a plan God already knew how I was coming out before I ever went in because it didn't matter how much you tried to do things to me he always meant it for my good and I don't know who I'm preaching to but somebody just got your word tonight huh? that God ain't had to turn nothing no it was always supposed to happen that way why so God could get the glory because he's in he's intentional so can I try to segue to the text talking about this intentional God when you read Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1 it seems as though there is an incidental clause in the text, but it's not incidental, it's intentional. We read Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, here it is, Go down, church shout down to the potter's house. Why does God have to give me the geographic instructions? Why does God have to let me know where he told Jeremiah to go? No, it's not incidental, friends. It's intentional because in order for Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house, he had to pass through a place called Gehenna. Let the church shout Gehenna. Gehenna was a burning inferno where they burned trash all day and all night. Gehenna was an Old Testament portrait and picture 
future of hell itself. Watch the text. Jeremiah is on his way to where God told him to go. He's being obedient to where God told him to go. He's doing what God told him to do. But in order to get where he's headed, he's got to first go through hell. May I suggest to somebody in here tonight that maybe the reason all hell is breaking loose in your life is not because you're outside of the will of God, but it might mean that you're right where God wants you to be. Because God has a holy habit of giving us the destination and leaving out the details. And do you want to know why God has to put us in the fire? It's because God knows that your life is just like a good cake. It don't matter if you got all the ingredients right. Until you put the cake in the heat, it'll never rise. And God knows there's some stuff in here that won't come out of here until he puts you into the fire. But I don't need all of y'all tonight. If I can just get about 14 of y'all, I'll make 15. Who can testify that I thank God that I had to go through the fire? But watch this. I thank God that he kept his hand on the thermostat. Because God is the only one who will let you go through the fire and come out not smelling like smoke. And I'm looking for some folk in the building who can testify, Reverend, I've been through hell, but I came out looking like Halle Berry. And I don't look like what I've been through because the fire wasn't meant to make me bitter. It was meant to make me better. And I don't need all of y'all tonight. I just need some real folk who can get with me and say, Reverend, I'm in the fire right now. But as I go through the fire, he's making me better. As I go through the fire, he's making me stronger. As I go through the fire, he's making me wiser. And when you see me in my next season, you won't even recognize me because you have to know I'm fireproof. Will you give your neighbor an air fire? Don't touch him. And tell him I'm fireproof. Tell him I've been through the fire. And I've been through the flood. But I don't look like what I've been through. Because I serve, I feel God in here. Because I serve the God who will allow you to go through. But he already planned that you're coming out. So, I feel like working tonight. So God, thank you Palmer. So God sends Jeremiah there. And when he comes through Gehenna, he gets to the potter's house. And when he gets to the potter's house, he sees the potter working on the wheel. There's so much symbolism in the text. The potter symbolizes God. The vessel of clay symbolizes Israel. And at the time of the text, Israel is a broken nation. At the time of our text, Israel is a captive nation. The gates to their city have been burned. The wall has been torn down. They have been displaced. They have been cast away. But God sends Jeremiah. Here's the word. Don't miss your shout. God sends Jeremiah to the potter's house because here's the word that God wants the Israel to know and he wants you to remember that I know right now you're a captive people but you're still a chosen people and you cannot allow where you are here to confuse you about who you are because where you are may say one thing but your issue is not your identity and I don't know who I'm preaching to in here tonight but I came to tell somebody I know your issue looks captive but your identity is still chosen and I'm looking for some folk who can testify I might be broke right now but I'm still chosen I might be lonely right now but I'm still chosen I might be sick right now but I'm still chosen might be dealing with some depression right now but I'm still chosen and that's why I walk like I walk because I'm chosen that's why I talk like I talk because I'm chosen that's why I praise him like I praise him because I've been chosen by God God wants them to know I know you feel like you're on the potter's wheel and I know you feel like your life is going in circles but here's the shout tonight Lorenzo God says whenever you feel you're on the potter's wheel and your life is going in circles. The good news tonight is that if you're on the potter's wheel, you're still in the potter's hand. And if you're still in the potter's hand, it's because God is trying to make something out of your life. But don't miss this. Can I tell you why I'm preaching this tonight? Because Jared, this text tonight exposes a lot of the shallow spirituality that we have become accustomed to in the 21st century church. Because in the 21st century church, we have really made people believe that God is only the God of your destiny. So everything is about my destiny. I got to get my destiny. I got to be who God called me to be. 
I got to be who God destined me to be. And that's on Mary had a little lamb. I got to be who God made me to be. And that's on I'm going to quit my destiny. I'm going to reach my purpose. I'm going to be who God called me to be. Here's the problem, boo-boo. God is not just the God of your destiny. God is also the God of your development. In other words, friends, God's not just trying to get you there. God's trying to grow you there. God's not just trying to get you a miracle. God's trying to make Make you mature and I knew y'all wasn't going to shout about that tonight because you just want a God that gives you destiny but hear this destiny without development is a disaster did you hear what I said I said destiny without development is a disaster if you rush into destiny and you miss out on the development you're going to ruin whatever God had promised you because you're not going to be ready for it and so God told me to tell you tonight I know you feel like you're on the potter's wheel and I know you think it's mundane and I know I know you think it's average and I know you think it's beneath you but God says what you don't even realize is that it's not something I'm trying to do for you it's something I'm trying to do in you I'm trying to cultivate something on the inside of you so that when you get where I'm trying to take you you can stay there so here's the question y'all already tired of me here's the question so so how does God make something out of me I'm trying to how does God make something out of me how does he do it Three things tonight, nothing clever, just clear and concise. Here's the first one. God makes something out of me. First of all, watch this. When he breaks me to make me better. Will you say that with me? Say he breaks me to make me better. I'm trying to cut across the field. I don't want Pastor Walker to tell me I preach too long tonight. Here, 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 here the thing. Uh, in, in this life, I got some good news and some bad news. Uh, in this life, God's going to have to break you. I, I know you don't like that. Uh, but, but sometimes relationships are going to fall apart. Sometimes doors are going to close. Sometimes opportunities are going to collapse. Sometimes God's got to break you. That's the bad news. Can I give you the good news? The good news is whenever God breaks you, it's not to make you bitter, it's to make you better. It's not to hurt you, it's to help you. It's not for your detriment, it's for your development. It's not for your gloom, it's for your growth. It's not because it's a mistake, it's for your maturation. Whenever God breaks you, it's because he sees something in you he's trying to do in your life. Watch the text. The text says that the potter is working on the wheel. He notices issues and imperfections and indiscretions in the vessel. What he notices is that's what's in his view was not his vision for the vessel. And I think I need to rush to tell you tonight that you got to be careful letting everybody have a voice to your life because everybody didn't have the vision for your life. And so some people will look at your life and think that it looks beautiful, but that's because they weren't the visionary. And so God sees that what's in, his what's in his view was not in his vision. So look at what the text says, Bishop Johnson, he marred it that word marred in the original Hebrew etymology literally means to break and destroy here's the problem the potter doesn't break the work because he's a bully no why does the potter break his work the reason the potter breaks his work is because he knows that the vessel is not ready to be put on the showroom floor yet see the problem Terrence Hartford is that everybody wants to be a product but nobody wants to go through the process and the problem with that is if you can't handle my process you can't hate on my product see there are people who want what you have but they are not able to handle the stuff that you had to go through to get where you are right now see there are a whole lot of preachers who see pastor Harvey Walker and they want what he has but you don't know the suffering he had to go through you don't know the lies that's been told on him you don't know how many people have betrayed him and walked away you don't know how many projects failed and how many things and people forsook him for him to get where he is which means you can't hate on his product because you might can't handle his process and all I'm trying to tell somebody tonight is don't skip the process it's painful and it's long and it's boring and it's uncomfortable and it's uneasy and you don't like it and it feels frustrated and it feels beneath you it's a hard thing when you know that you've got a palace anointing but you got a pastor assignment it's a hard thing when you know that God put destiny they home you but it seems like you're still living beneath your privilege but hear me today child of God it's cause God's trying to get you ready for the showroom floor and if you miss out on the process nobody's gonna want your product here the question Bishop Bishop can I work a little while longer here, 
I asked the question of the text. Minister Teresa Casey, why does a potter break his work? Three reasons. You ready for them? Here's the first one. The first reason a potter will break his work is, first of all, if there are visible cracks on the surface. <laughs> See, the potter knows nobody wants to buy a cracked pot. Preach Josh down. So if there are visible cracks on the surface, the potter's got to break it and start all over. Uh, can, can I help somebody tonight? Some of you have been trying to figure out why, why God keeps having to break you. It's because you got too many cracks in your character. And God, hear me tonight, doesn't want the now you to mess up the next you. See, some of you ought to be really happy that God has not given you all the stuff you prayed for yet. Because if God had already given you all the stuff you prayed for, all of those visible cracks in your surface would have messed them up by now. But what God has to do is he has to break you so he can get some of that lying out of you and some of that cussing out of you and some of that lust out of you and some of that promiscuity out of you and some of that fornication out Y'all don't want to talk to me. And some of that addiction out of you and some of that depression. God's got to break you so that he can clean up the holes in your character here the second one breaks it if there are visible cracks on the surface here's the second one he breaks it secondly if there's too much air in the vessel it keeps the vessel from being solid in other words sometimes God's got to break you because you got too much fluff in you you got too much stuff that's keeping you and his relationship from being solid yeah you know that's why you schedule date night on Bible study night. That's why you wash your car when you should be at church on Sunday. Oh, oh, I got a better one for you because some of y'all don't do. That's why you show up late to online church. How you late in your own house? Y'all don't. Because you're too busy trying to cook and clean and, and do everything else. And you can't even sanctify a space to watch church online on time. Where they do that at? Uh, because you got too much hair. And so God says, sometimes I got to break you so that I can get that stuff away from you. That's keeping you from being as close to me as I need you to be. So sometimes I'm going to let your boo make your boo-hoo so I can show you I can mend your broken heart. Sometimes I'll let that job walk away so I can show you I'm the provider. Sometimes I'll let things fall apart so I can show you I still can put them back together again one more thing and I'm done he will break it they're visible cracks break it if there's too much air keeps it from being solid here's the third reason he broke it if the vessel was too large in size sometimes God gotta break us cause we get the big head and tonight I ain't telling you what I heard I'm telling you what I know because the problem is some of us who are used by God Sometimes we'll start to celebrate our gift more than the gift giver. And if you're not careful, what will end up happening is because God used you, you'll start thinking you're the only person God can use. So because Terrence let you sing one solo and you did well, now you think you're God's gift to the choir. Because Pastor Walker let you preach one service, now you think, you know, you, you God's gift, you T.D. Jakes in the, in the making. And because you done did one thing right, you know, now you just God's gift and everything needs you. But can I tell you something tonight? God does not use you because he needs you. God uses you because he wants to. God has used you because he chooses to use you. And I want you to know something tonight. I don't care how good of a preacher you might think I am. God can get a crackhead off the bottom of 610 freeway tonight, clean him up and use him to preach a better sermon than all of us have ever preached because God can use whoever he wants to use. And so sometimes God's got to break us so he can humble us, so he can bring us back down down to reality. Why? Because pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. But if you humble yourself hey, uh, before the mighty hand of God, he will exalt you in due season. If you can stay small enough long enough, God will make you big enough soon enough. All right. Y'all don't like none of that, so let's try it this way. Uh, Courtney, I'm getting married. Uh, I'm getting married. I know you did. I'm getting married. <laughs> I love you. I'm getting married. And uh, so I went to the, to the jewelry store. And uh, when I went to the jewelry store, Tell Holy Ghost what? spoke to me. And the Holy Ghost said to me to ask, ask the man, how do you know when gold is ready to be used? So I said to the man, I said, hey, sir. I said, how do you know when gold is ready to be used? He said, man, that's a good question. He said, what I do with the gold, he says, I take it and I put it in a pot. <clears throat> and I boil it down to a melting point. 
I said, is that when the gold is ready to be used? He said, no, sir. He said, once I boil it down to a melting point, all of the impurities rise to the top and I'm able to scrape them off. I said, is that when the gold is ready to be used? He said, no, sir. He said, sir, the way that I know that the gold is ready to be used is when I can look over into the pot and see my face in the reflection. Do you want to know why God keeps breaking you? It's because he's trying to look over into your life and see his face in the reflection. And I'm looking for a few people in the cross in the night who can testify, God, if that's why you're breaking me, break me, Lord, break me. Break me till I walk right. Break me till I talk right. Break me till I live right. Break me till I love right. Break me till I stop cussing. Break me till I stop fighting. Break me till I come out of fornication. Break me till I come out of adultery. Break me till I come out of addiction. Break me until you make me what you want me to be. Point number two, I'm, I'm almost through. I know y'all don't like me tonight. Here's his here's second thing. Uh, you know God's making something out of you when he breaks you to make you better. Here's second thing. You know God is making something out of you when he molds you into his masterpiece. Can I give you my shout tonight? Here's my shout tonight, Palmer. The shout of the text tonight is that Terrence Hall and Hartford it don't matter how many pieces your life get broken into. You want to know why? why? Because God is the God who can take your broken pieces and make a masterpiece. Did you hear what I said? I said it doesn't matter how many pieces your life gets broken into. God can take your broken pieces. And, and I need a few witnesses in the room tonight who can testify that God will take your pieces. And I wish I had at least one divorce survivor. They took the toaster. You took the blender. But God showed you he'd mend together your broken heart. And you a witness tonight. He'll make a masterpiece. I wish I had at least one cancer survivor in the building. You already been through the chemo and you came out with a testimony that he'll take your broken pieces and make a masterpiece. I wish I had at least one scandal survivor. Folks spread your business all over town, but God showed you everything the devil tried to mess up. He'll clean up, and you know he'll take your broken pieces. All right, y'all don't like me. Verse number four is the shot of the is the verse. Bible says he broke him. Watch this, as it pleased the potter, and he made it again. So it was pleasing to the potter to make it. I had a problem with that. Because I know y'all good church people in here, but I got a problem with the fact that the text says that the potter is pleased with my process. You mean to tell me God is okay with me hurting? You mean to tell me God is okay with me being in this uncomfortable and uneasy place? They told me in Sunday school that God was loving, and he is. They told me in Sunday school that God was patient and kind and, and he is. They told me in Sunday school that God would always make a way out of no way and he, he will. So how can he be pleased with the process? So I sent the Lord a text message on my way to church. And I said, Lord, how can you be happy with what hurts me? And the Lord said, it's because you're reading the Bible too fast. I said, what do you mean I'm reading the Bible too fast? He said, read verse 4 again. Watch the text. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. You missed it too. Let me try it one more time. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. They tell me the third time's a charm. Let me try it one more again. So the vessel that he made was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Since you missed the revelation, let me give it to you the same way God did. God said, when you read verse 4, you see the same potter. You see the same clay, but you see a different vessel. You missed your shot. I said, you see the same potter. You see the same clay, but you see a different vessel. Can I tell you why the potter is pleased with your process? It's because he knows where you were. He sees where you are, and he's excited about the progress. And I don't need all of y'all tonight, because this point ain't for you perfect people. But this point is just for the people in the building who can testify I'm not perfect, but I am making progress. See, I know some of you, your testimony tonight is things you used to do, you don't do no more, and places you used to go you don't go no more that ain't my testimony can I tell you my testimony things I used to do I don't do as often <laughs> and places I used to go I don't go as often and folk I used to hang with I don't hang with as often and stuff I used to say I don't say as often but I'm giving God a crazy praise tonight not because I know that I'm perfect but I think him that I'm not who I used to be I know I still got a ways to go but I think him that he's been changing me he's been molding me he's 
been shaping me. Is there anybody other than me tonight who can say I'm making progress? Is there anybody other than me tonight who can testify that I'm making progress? All right, I feel like we're about to ride. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, Pastor Walker, um, the last time I came to the crossing, I was able to afford to go to my favorite restaurant, and uh, I went to my favorite restaurant. It's called McDonald's. And because Pastor had paid me, I didn't have to order off the dollar menu. I could order a number one. Super sad. Yes, Lord, I feel like I need one right now. With two apple pie. When, when I got home and I got ready to eat my burger, the Big Mac box started talking to me. The Big Mac box said, Josh, read me. I looked at the Big Mac box and said, first of all, Big Mac box, I don't know why you're talking to me. But all I see is a big M. He said, no, 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 Josh, read me. I said, Big Mac box, I just told you, all I see is a big M. He said, no, Josh, flip me over. I flipped over that Big Mac box and the Big Mac box had these words on it, made from recycled paper. The Big Mac box started preaching to me then. He said, see, Josh, I haven't always looked like this. He said, I used to be a worthless piece of trash. He said, but somebody thought enough of me that instead of putting me in the trash can, they put me in the recycle bin. And then there was a nice old man who looked at me and he saw some value in me. So he pulled me out and he started working on me. He started reshaping me until I was able to be used by you today. And I know outside this church it said a crossing community church. But I think we ought to change all the name of our churches to Recycle Paper Community Church. Because that's all all of us are. All of us are just some recycle paper. God should have thrown us away a long time ago. God should have wrote us off a long time ago. But I wonder is there anybody other than me who can get glad that God goes green. You can give God praise tonight because you serve a God who's in the recycling business. Anybody other than me can say I'm here tonight because God recycles. I'm here tonight not because I've done everything right. Not because I've been perfect. Not because I crossed every T. Not because I dotted every high. But while I was yet a sinner, I feel Jesus in here. I said while I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me and he's been working on my life. All right. I'm signing off here. Sign off, brother. I'll sign off. Let's do it one time. I'm signing off here. But you know God is making something out of you. Whenever God does, he breaks you to make you better. You know God is making something out of you when he molds you into his masterpiece. But I sign off here when I tell you, you know God is making something out of you when he holds you in the hollow of his hand. I'm signing off tonight. When I tell you, I like that. I'm signing off tonight. When I tell you that the safest place in the whole wide world is in the hands of God. Because whenever you're in the Lord's hand, you don't have to worry about nothing. When you're in his hand, you, he'll hold you to sleep and rock you to sleep at night when you're in his hand. You don't have to worry about paying your bills because your God will supply all of your needs. According to his riches and glory, when you're in his hand, you don't have to worry about your enemies because no weapon that's formed against you is ever going to be able to prosper. When you're in his hand, he'll, he'll help you to keep your mind when everybody else is losing theirs. When you're in his hand, he'll protect you from no good Negroes that want to see you fall. When you're in his hand, he'll keep you from falling even when you're failing. The text says, God tells Jeremiah, just like the clay. It's in the potter's hand. Say, so ye in my hand, O house, oh uh, yeah, O house of, of Israel. And I, I'm glad tonight to be in the Lord's hand. Lord, become his hand. Oh Lord, his hands are mighty good hands. Yeah, then there's power in his hands. And there is healing in his hands. And then there is joy in his hands. And there is peace in the hands of the Lord.
Lord, with his hands, he created the heavens. And with his hands, he created the earth. With his hands, he healed the sick and he raised the dead. With his hands, he made the blind to see and he made the lame to walk. But there's one more thing I love about his hands. It's that one find him on a hill far away come on let's ride they put nails in his hands they put nails in his feet they hung him high and they stretched him wide but oh, no, 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 no. that's not how the story but early y'all don't want to help me preach I said early y'all still ain't helping me Baptist I said oh, no. Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands we used to sing a song that say he got the whole world in his hands he got you and me brother in his hands he got the little bitty babies in his hands yeah. he got the whole world in his hands now I'm done preaching now but is there anybody here that know you're in his hands? Is there anybody here that's ever tried him for yourself? Hey, is there anybody in here who can say, I'm glad that I'm in his hands? Well, if you're in his hands, you ought to get out your seat. If you're in his hands, you ought to get on your feet. If you're in his hands, you ought to give him glory like you're in the hands of the Lord and I wish tonight you could touch your neighbor but since you can't touch him why don't you just lean over and tell somebody real fast tell them neighbor y'all ain't talking to nobody I said lean over and tell somebody real fast tell them hey neighbor tell them time is filled with swift transition none on earth on move can stand build your hopes on things eternal and hold on to God's unchanging hand is there anybody here that's going to hold on is there anybody here that's trusted in Jesus anybody here leaning on Jesus anybody here depending on it well, if you're depending on it, and if you're leaning on it, why don't you praise him? Why don't you give him glory? How I'm going to do it when my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving, I will, will, will. I'll bless thee, bless thee, O oh Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, ah, na, 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 na. Ah, na, 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 na. and all that's within me, bless his holy name, I'm done with y'all, but my soul done got happy, cause I'm glad to be in the hands of the Lord, is there anybody here who's in his hands, is there anybody here that can testify that I seen the lightning flash I heard the thunder roar hey, I felt sin breakers dash and they were trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me fight on pray on preach on sing on dance on serve on go on cause he prayed yeah, 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 yeah. I said he promised. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said he promised never to leave me. Anybody here? No, he ain't gonna leave you. Anybody here? No, he gonna be by your side. Anybody?
somebody here trusted in it, leaning on it, depending on it. Well, don't wait till the battle's over. Pray him right now. Give him glory right now. Bless his name right now. If you're in his hands, when I count to three, somebody run, somebody dance, somebody shout, somebody holler, somebody praise him, but give him glory. Like the storm may come, winds may blow, but I'm safe in his hands. The winds might be blowing, but I'm safe in his hand. Storm might be raging, but I'm safe in his hands. If you're safe, you ought to shout. If you're safe, you ought to dance. One, two, three, shout! Open your mouth and say yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yeah. 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 Everybody's standing. I'm done. Lift those hands. I'm done. Lift those hands. I'm done. Hmm. Lift those hands all over this house. Lift those hands. I, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way my life is in your hands with jesus i can make it come help me terrence and jared with him i know i can stand i can stand i can stand no matter what may come my way my life is in Come on, everybody, look at Say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can make it. Ooh, da, 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 da. I know. Say, no matter what, no. Say, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can make it. With Jesus, I with him, with him, I know I can say no matter what. Come on, stay right there. Say no matter what, no. No, 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 no. Say my life is in your hand. Say my life is in your hand. Come on, say that. My life is in your hand. My life is in your hand. My life is in your hand. Oh, everybody say this. Say, oh, what capable hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Oh, what capable hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Oh, Lift your hands and take a look at this. Hands. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your 
trust your hand. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Yeah. Lord, I trust your hand. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Yeah. yeah. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. So, so I put it all, put it all, put it all in your hands. So I put it all. So I put it all, put it all, put it all in your hands. So I put it all, put it all. Come on, let's have church one time. Everybody lift your hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Oh, what capable hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Oh, what capable hands. Say, oh, what capable hands. Capable hand, I feel oh, Jesus. Hey, say, Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your hand. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Yeah. Lord, I trust your hand. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Oh, yeah. Lord, I trust your hand. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Come on, tell him that tonight. Huh? Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Yeah. Lord, I tried to do it my own way, but I trust your hand. Oh, no, 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 no. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. So tonight, this is what I do. So I put it all, put it all, put it all in your hand. I put it all, put it all, put it all in your hand. So I put it all. Put it all, put it all in your hand. I put it all, put it all, Listen. put it all in your hand. I know we're in COVID, so I'm not going to ask you to touch nobody, and I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar, but right where you are, you socially distanced, just lift your hands. And right now, nobody knows what you need to put in the hands of God like you do. Yes, Lord. So when I get to the name Jesus, I need every person in the room to just start praying. Hallelujah. And that thing that you need God to do, I need you to put it in his hand. Because for somebody, you can say, Reverend, tonight that wasn't a sermon. You preach my story. Somebody tonight, you in the process right now. But it's just because God's trying to make something out of your life. So when I get to the name Jesus, I want you to open up your mouth and pray. Don't pray silently, pray aloud. Open up your mouth and put it in the hands of the Lord. Because the Bible teaches us that if we come unto God, believing, he'll do just what we need him to do. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, pray church, pray. Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your hand, oh yeah. Say, Lord, I trust your hand. Lord, I trust your hand. My life is in your hands. Come on, 30 more seconds, pray. My life is in your hand, your hand, your hands. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands. My life is in your hands, yeah, yeah. I'm on the condition. My life is in your hands, oh Lord. Hey, hallelujah to Jesus. My life is in your hands, oh, 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 yeah. So, Lord, I taught what you told me to teach. I preached what you told me to preach. Tonight, there are people all over this room who feel like they're in the process. There are people all over this house tonight, God, who are being processed in the midst of this pandemic. Truth of the matter is, for many, it wasn't just the pandemic. They've been being processed for a while now. But tonight, we thank you for the truth of your word, that you only break us to make us better. God, you only allow us to go through hell because you're trying to take us higher. So tonight, God, we say we submit to your process. Mold us into your masterpiece. Whatever you need to move, move it. Whatever you need to change, change it. Whatever you need to fix, fix it. Whatever you need to rearrange, rearrange it. Tonight, God, we give you glory. Because in spite of how hard it's been, 
We thank you that we still have been in your hand. We thank you that you're still holding us in the hollow of your hand. Yes. And we know that if we're in your hand, everything is going to be all right. And so tonight, we don't have to wait till the battle's over. But tonight, we give you praise, glory, and honor. Because we know that on the other side of this, there's glory. On the other side of this, there's promotion. On the other side of this, there's elevation. On the other side of this, there's peace. On the other side of this, there's joy. On the other side of this, there's favor. On the other side of this, there's life. Hey, I feel that. There's life. Hey, there's life. Hey, there's life. Hey, hey. there's life. Somebody's getting ready to live. Huh? Oh, we come against depression. We come against suicidal thoughts. We come against the attack of the enemy. And we declare life. Hey, hey, hey. We declare life. We declare life. You're going to live. We thank you for it. This won't be the end of us. But there's something greater coming. So we won't get weary. And I will do it. As you know, in due season, we're getting ready to reap. If we faint not. It's in the name of Jesus of Christ. We pray and ask it all. Listen, if you believe it. If you believe that on the other side of your process, God's got some great stuff in store for you. If you believe God is making something out of you, if you know this season you're in is not a disaster, you're in a season of development, and you're on your way to the other side, then we're going to shout our purpose. I need you to lift your hands. I need you to throw your head back. And when I count to three, I want you to shout in this place. Watch this. One word. I just want you to shout better. Just shout better. Because God is making everything. Oh, am I? Hey, hatababashi. I said God is making everything better for you. On the count of three, come on, holla. One, two, three, shout better. Come on, you not shout. Shout better. Come on, shout better. Come on, it's getting better for you. Better in your family. Hey, hey, hey. Better in your finances. Better on your job. Better for your family. Better for your kids. Better for your ministry. Better joy. Hey, better peace. Hey, better love. Better. 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 Now, if you know it's getting better, just shout and give him glory. Come on and bless our God tonight. Come on. How many of you know that like that potter's vessel, you were on the wheel, but God worked on you? Can you do this with me tonight? As we get ready to get out of here, we want to give God thanks for the word we received and the place where we are. And so I'm going to ask everybody who can and will to get up with your offering. You got an offering? You get up with one with me? Just say this with me. Say the money in my hand is a seed. This seed is leaving my hand but changing my life. I thank you that it's activating the promises according to God's word. Amen. Can you just, brothers, can we just receive? Let me take time. To declare and decree those of you who are here tonight that this word went forth but it didn't just go forth for you to hear it went forth for you to change God wants to do something great in your life tonight but you got to be willing to be in his hands for some of you you know what that's going to mean that's going to mean the night before you leave this place, you're going to have to admit you need some help. And Jesus says, I'm willing to do it for you. All right. We ready? Anybody got gifts tonight? Those of you who came in, you can just bring them. Just bring them. Come on, come on. Thank you, it's gonna turn in our favor. Anybody glad he turning it around?
Father, we thank you for gifts and givers. We ask that you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you receive now our pastor? First, I want to thank God for this preaching. I'd like to say to uh, Gracious Hope that God is a sovereign God, as he told us. And if we wasn't going through what we are going through, we wouldn't hear this message. The only way we got a chance to hear this message is because the process that we're going through, that God sent a preacher to let us know that he is making something out of our lives. Thank God for him. Thank God for him. God is making something. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank God for you. We're not gonna stay. We're gonna we we gonna stand and be dismissed by our pastor speaker. Standing to your feet. Said it's turning around. It's turning around for me. Come on, stand to your feet. We're getting ready to go tonight. Thank you again, Pastor Walker. Said it's turning around. Said it's turning around for me. Said it's turning around for me. Said it's turning around, Lord. It's turning around for me. Just lift your hands. We're getting ready to go tonight, but just declare that over your life tonight. Said it's turning around. It's turning around for me. Said it's turning around for me. Said it's turning around for me. Said it's turning around. It's turning around. Said it's turning in the news. Oh Lord. Said it's turning around. It's turning around. Lift your hands. When you walk through the storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. The end of the storm, there's a golden sky. The sweet silver song of a lark. We're going through the wind, we're going through the rain, though. Rain, though sometimes your dreams may be tossed and blown. Walk on with Jesus in your heart, my friend, and I promise you this. You'll never, ever walk alone now under him who's able to keep you from falling. To the only wise God we shall ever, 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 ever know. To our king, the one who's immortal, invisible, and eternal. To him who sits high and looks low. May grace, might, majesty, peace, power, prosperity, and dominion be his forever, ever, and forever, ever. Every heartfelt believer that loves the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and amen again. Go in peace. No, God is turning it around. So it is turning around, Lord.